the reason why you are people are broke or people don't have lack the money they should because they don't know how to operate money mm. they don't know how to spend money they don't know how to invest money they don't know how to save money they don't know how to lend money okay. those are four important things in right? investing in well just money principles learning how to save learning how to spend right so i always say that if you have more money under your uh, bed or in your closet than you have in your bank account or in your investment account you don't know how to spend money mm. Right. So one is learning how to spend, learning how to save, learning how to invest, learning how to borrow. Right. So those are four important things just in money lessons, money principles. Right. So if you don't invest your money, then you're now saying that the only way that I can grow my money is based on what I can physically do. Right. Time for money. Right. Time for money, which is never an even exchange because you can't work 24 hours a day, but your money can. Like you need a break, you need rest, you need lunch, but your money doesn't. So the one money must, the most uh, powerful one is just not investing at all, right? The next one is spending money that we don't have. I've read a stat that said most people spend a dollar and four cent for every one dollar that they make. So now we're spending more money than we actually have. At that point, you can never catch up. So. I remember when I used to work my job, when I was working, right? I remember when I would get overtime. I would always figure out how much of that overtime was and I would always account for it in my head. Mm. So most people do that. If they get overtime, they've already spent that money before it hits the paycheck. It's already, they already know what they're gonna spend it on. So spending money we don't have and then most importantly is just buying things we don't need, right? Most people don't have the financial fortitude to be strong enough to say, you know what, I don't need this, right? Most people impulse buy, right? So impulse buying after that uh, gratification is gone, after that you, you release those endorphins, now it's like, damn, I really didn't need that. But it's too late because you've already bought it. The wealthy people already know how to build wealth. They're gonna keep on compounding their wealth. They're gonna keep on making sure they make the right investments. They're gonna keep on making sure they build businesses. They're gonna keep on making sure that they're ahead of this curve. Okay, the, the economy's gonna crash. Guess who's gonna win more money than all in a recession? The wealthy people. Why? Because poor people are panicking right now. If we talked about inflation going up. Well, guess the, the average person in America spends more money on transportation, bills, and food. No matter who you are, those are the big three. Right. Well, if you're poor, then now because inflation is so high that instead of eating a 50 percent of your paycheck, now it's eat up 75 percent of your paycheck. Right. But if you're already in the upper echelon, you was going to do that anyway. It didn't matter because you still have investments. You still know how to maneuver in this type of market. So why waste time to me? Why waste time on saying, yo, how do we close the wealth gap? No, that's not my fight. My fight is. How do we get the information that help us participate in the game? I can't tell you how late I came to this game. You figured this out before I did. I was building businesses already. This mm -hmm. is why I'm so fucking in awe. When I think about how far down the road, I went, I learned the game of building businesses. You mm -hmm. learned the game of buying businesses. Mm -hmm. Okay, maybe people don't wanna do the thing that I did. Mm -hmm. Some days I wonder. Mm -hmm. And you went down another road, which is available to everybody. 100%. Okay, so now the people have their little primer and how all of this game works. Right. One, how, why don't people do it? In fact, let, let's start there. We'll, we'll definitely talk about how to do it well, but why don't people do it? I think because America has painted this picture that it is dangerous. So think about TV. I'm gonna lose my money. I'm gonna lose my money. Uh, stock market crashes, right? And then every show that you've seen about Wall Street is about people that are crooked, mm. that take advantage of people's money and then get rich, you know? And so people don't associate with that, right? People feel like, you know what? I don't wanna be a part of that. I don't know enough about that, right? When investing in the stock market isn't an IQ game. It's not about, it's not about being the most brilliant person in the world, right? It's about understanding basic economics and basic economics is what we know every day. You understand this, supply and demand, right? Supply and demand says that if Michael Jordan drops a shoe, then the line is going to be wrapped around the corner, right? But if you find a way to get that shoe, hold on to that shoe, and then later on, you can now sell that shoe at a top tier price, right? Supply and demand. 
right? If we can understand that, you understand certain parts of basic economics, right? You understand that. If Michael Jordan were to release 100 million yep. shoes, mm -hmm. won't be worth much. Won't be worth. But if he releases- A thousand. Exactly. Now- Price. Gonna go crazy. And then over time, it becomes worth even more because yep. most people will wear the shoes, mm -hmm. lower the value, but for anybody that holds on to them. So now you've got decreasing supply, yep. which creates a, even if the, the demand stayed steady, if the supply decreases, now you've got um, a positive dynamic. 100%. And so that's and that's that's the that's the most amazing part about investing is everybody won't be able to build a billion dollar business, right? But everybody can invest in one, and that's why I love it, right? So the three the three things in my wealth pyramid is stocks, business, real estate. I believe you should have all three, right? But you can get away with two. How are you differentiating between stocks and business? So when I say stocks, it means like me buying shares of a business. Yep. Business second is me creating a business and then real estate third. So you think so, everybody should create a business? No, 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 no. That's why I say you can get away with two out of the three. Gotcha, gotcha. You know what I'm saying? So everybody doesn't have to create a business because this is not for everybody. Mm -hmm. But you can see what we do know is as America evolves, so does business. As business evolves, there are some brilliant people that says for that business, there's a problem for that problem. I have the solution. That's a business you would like to invest in. Right. And so if we can invest in the solutions, I always say that if we invest in the solutions, we cannot help but win. Investing in a solution. OK, making Amazon was a solution to so many things getting us information faster, getting us books faster, getting us, it changed the game. It revolutionized how we, how we got uh, packages. It, rev it made somebody say, you know what? I could go to the store today, but I'm willing to wait one day to get this package. Can I just say for the young people in the crowd mm -hmm. who grew up with Amazon, yeah. there was a time you'd have to wait four to Come six on. weeks <laughs> to get something in the mail. Exactly. Exactly. That's, that's insane. It's you can order something in the morning and get it get in the, the afternoon. In some places you get it the same day. And so when we think about revolutionizing the game, evolving, that's what I love about investing, right? I'm think, think about Tesla and I'm not advocating for anyone to invest in these businesses, mm -hmm. but I'm just showing how the, how the world has evolved and you can build your wealth for me 100% if you're bold enough to bet on the future. If you're bold enough to bet on the future and be patient enough to let it take place, you will win and you will win big. That is, that's without a doubt. So we, we see the evolution of Tesla and we see what's going on with this business. Even if you don't agree with everything that Elon does, you say, okay, well, Rolls Royce just dropped its first EV car for $400,000, right? They're saying they're gonna be all electric by 2030. General Motors is saying they're gonna be all electric by 2032. Ford has dropped electric cars now. What is that telling us right now? The landscape of vehicles is changing. Right. So what do I say? OK, I want to be a part of this evolution. I want to be a part of not only the electric car revolution, but the charging stations, the batteries. Right. These are the components, the supply chain that makes this whole um, sector possible. And so for me, that's betting on the future. And if we can understand, if we can truly grasp that, that your money is not doing you no justice in a bank, it's not especially now. Right? It's not doing you no justice in a bank. Why not? Well, because the more they print money, the more your money loses value. Right? The more inflation goes up, the more your money loses value. So a $100 spent in 2019, that same $100 now takes $109. Right? So your money is lost. You need that to buy, the same, to buy thing. the same thing. Right? So if you bought this mug, for $100 in 2019. I'm gonna slap now, you in the mouth if that's what you did. But yeah. <laughs> it now costs you $109, right? You need that much more money. Mm -hmm. So we understand that one lie we've been told is sitting our money in a bank. So that's probably should have added that to the equation earlier, right? Putting our money in a bank, thinking that the bank is the safest place to have our money, right? That's probably the most dangerous place because I always see a dollar that's not moving is a dollar that's losing. Right. So sitting our money in a bank is not the place to be. Right. So what would be how the, do you make your money move? How you make your money move by making great investments or just investing. So I'll give you an example for me personally. I literally don't have but like twelve thousand dollars sitting in a bank. Mm. 
all of my money is in the market. 90% of it is in the market. So I use what's called the VOO, which is the Vanguard Index Fund for the S&P 500. I use that as my savings account. So every month or every week, I'm putting money in that. Well, trap, what happens when the market is going down? Well, my money wasn't making no money in the savings account anyway. Right. So I'm putting it in there, right? And then what happens when the market rebounds? Because we won't be here forever. We won't be here forever. What happens when the market rebounds? Well, Talk to people about realized losses versus unrealized losses. Okay. Because I oh, think this good. really messes up. That's good. Me. That's good. That's good. So an unrealized loss is when, let's say I have $100 in something and that goes down to $89, right? Unrealized. Meaning if I sold it today, right. I wouldn't be able to sell it for what I paid for, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but it's I there. have to sell it. It's okay. So, so you, you buy something at $100, it goes down to $80. If you don't sell it, you have an unrealized loss of $20. I mean, you didn't sell it, your equity just decreased. But if you sell it, you realize that gain. You have now made that gain that realistic. Loss. I mean, that loss, you've realized that loss, you've made that loss realistic. So you've now essentially lost that $20, right? That's a, un that's a realized loss. Now, realized gain is, is, the is the exact opposite, right? So if you go up to, uh, I buy something for 100, it goes up to 150 unrealized. I have a hundred and I have $50 in unrealized gain. So it's there, but I didn't sell it. It's there. Realizing it is saying I've cashed out. I've cashed out on it. Think about like you talked about Jeff Bezos, right? His net worth is what? 180 something billion dollars, something like that. I, last time I checked, 60% of his money was in Amazon stock. 60% of it. So this is why you wake up one day and you say, damn, Jeff lost $18 billion. Well, that's unrealized because he didn't cash out. So he didn't lose it. It's still there. Once the stock get, backs up, he recoups all of that. And so that's the dope part about the market. Yes, it fluctuates. Yes, it goes ups and downs. But that's also the most scariest part about the market because people who come from lower income, working class environments, the worst thing that can come to their mind is losing money that I bust my butt for. Mm. That's what makes the market so scary for them, and that confusion keeps them out of the market.